Hey guys, Matt from FN57 Sale here. I wanted to go over the installation of our um, red dot mount for the FN57. This is our custom uh, Trigicon Pro Shop mount that mounts to our Trigicon RM06 as well as a Burris Fast Fire. We have a unique mount for that one as well um, for both the MK2 and the USG model. So we're gonna go over briefly quickly on how to install this guy. This is a two piece mount. First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna loosen these middle screws here just a little bit to take the parts apart. One, put these aside somewhere so you don't lose them. And two. It should just fall apart like so. The next step is we're gonna actually work on our MK2 slide. So we're gonna put this aside. What we're gonna do is this has a spring inside of it. So you're gonna take the left side of it, you're gonna push it to the right. You're gonna take a little flathead screwdriver and you're gonna unscrew this screw here on the left. On the right, excuse me. And it's gonna come almost out and you can push it with your hand and then unscrew it with your finger. And you're gonna take that rear blade off. Keep the spring inside, you're gonna take this screw, put it back in there so the spring does not fall out. It's very easy to cross thread it. So use your hands and be very gentle. And work it in there and just do it be light. And you should be able to put this back on or you can actually wait for this process because you're gonna to have to take it off if you wanna retain your sight. So let's do that in the sake of time. And then the next step we're gonna do is this pin here and here this has to come out in order to take this cover off. So what we're gonna use is a punch. We're gonna take a look and see on the right side from the factory, there's little grooves here. That's what actually holds that in. So we're gonna punch that out from left to right. We're gonna use our punch here. We're gonna put this guy here, put the punch up on there, and slowly tap. Right through put this aside you're gonna take your finger here you're gonna lift up push down now it should be able to clear and push this forward this is your plastic cover it's gonna come out the front we're gonna put this aside now this is what we need to remove keep in mind guys there's a spring here for a loaded chamber indicator as well as a metal piece that pops that sticks out when you have a bullet in the chamber you can more than likely you should probably take this out okay and put it aside somewhere so you don't lose it because if you do flip the slide over it will fall out over here also this is your sight that you're gonna have to be pushing out and a lot of you guys don't have this universal sight pusher tool uh, that we have we got it from Brownells I think it's two hundred and fifty dollars we do a lot of these so we use we use it a significant amount but I want you to take a look here at this rear sight. There is a spring right under that sight that is used in conjunction with this guy here. See that? I don't know if you can see this. So what I want you to do is when you're pushing this sight out, whether it be from the left to the right, um, I'll show you the way that I do it. You wanna make sure that that spring doesn't jump out on you. Um, if you, if, it, if, it, if you drop the spring, you're gonna lose it. That's how small it is. So let's do this. We're gonna do a kind of a amateur gunsmith version of this. I'm gonna try at least for the people who don't have this sight pusher at home to see if we can do this without this sight pusher. And then more than likely we're gonna end up using it, but we're gonna take this guy here against the block. We're gonna take our hammer with the plastic side and we're just gonna gently hit this actually with a punch. We're gonna see if we can make it move. If I can't, then we're gonna use the pusher. FN makes these sights, um, I mean, they're in there very, very good. So this is probably not gonna work, but I wanted to see if we can do it for you guys at home so you guys can do this. All right, see, like I said, it's not working. So we're gonna go back to our sight model. Universal sight tool. I'm gonna to place this inside our universal sight tool. We're gonna push it all up against this side here. This is already set for me. And I'm going to use my drill. I've converted a drill. I put a standard, uh, you know, the, the part that goes inside the drill here. 
I've actually used this and it's the same size as the Allen wrench here. So instead of using it manually, it's a little bit faster doing it this way. So we are going to try to position this sight right where these screws go in. And we're going to put pressure here and we're going to push the sight out. We're going to tighten the slide first. Don't use the tool. Uh, don't use a drill doing this. Use a, a, a hand a hand tool because you will regret it um, if you haven't done it 50 times already. So okay. What we're going to use now, if you're going to use something like this, guys, you have to oil this first because there's going to be a lot of friction, and you're going to have to use two washers. We're going to place those two washers here to allow our and we're going to put some oil on that guy right there. And then I like to use these. These are different types of uh, pushers that come with the, um, the kit. This allows you to get a good grip on that. I like to put it backwards this way, facing the front. And we will take this and we'll begin. Put it right up against that site like that. And we're going to slowly push that site out using the power of the tool. See that? How it's coming out? Now you don't want to push it too much because remember there's a spring under there that you want to capture. And we forgot to uh, adjust the, the back that guy out. If somebody knows a better way than using a universal sight pusher tool, which is not ideal, please leave comments and let me know because it would be great to find a better way to do this. So we're gonna adjust the sight pusher tool because we adjusted it last time and we never put it back. So one of the things that this allows you to do is move this from either side. So I need more space here on this side. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna take this guy out. You could probably actually hit it with the hammer now. And I'm gonna loosen my side, loosen this side. We're gonna take this out. I actually cut these uh, pieces off of this, guys, because the FN57 sight is a little bit wide. It's not a typical, you know, small dovetail sight. So if you're gonna use something like this, you might wanna cut these out so it doesn't rub up, hit up against the other side. So I'm gonna take the spacer, I'm gonna move it over to this side. a little more room and then we're going to screw this guy back in here and I'm going to take our ball screw here okay now what you want to do is you want this to sit like this and this is exactly where you want these pushers to be. So we're going to tighten this down a little bit. If you tighten it fast, something like this, this will flip and it's, uh, it will do a lot of damage to your mouth. So just be careful if you're using a power tool. Okay, lock it in place. Tighten it by hand. Okay, now we're going to put the sight pusher back inside the same position. So we're going to tighten this guy down. Make sure it's very tight because it does have it because the slide is so thin. It has a tendency if this is not tight to turn, and then it's not going to be pushed out straight. It'll be pushed out on an angle. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna put our pusher back on. We're going to tighten it, and we're gonna to begin to push. Hold it down. Push, 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 push. Now you want, you don't, again, you don't want to take too much out because you have that spring down there. I have a bunch of extra springs because of how many I've lost personally. So you're going to keep going until you, let's see if I can see it. Okay. Okay. So I can see the spring now. We're going to take a little set of tweezers. We're going to back this guy out.
tweezers. As you can see here, right there, can you see that? There's a little hole with a spring in it. The site is pretty much loose already, so you can kind of wiggle it out. But I'm gonna take these tweezers, I should loosen that too. And I'm gonna grab that spring as tight as I can. Or just put your thumb over it, just in case. And then, there you go. So we got a spring. I don't know if you can see that or not. Can you see that? Put it some contrast. Little spring. Show them where it goes. Now we got the sight is out also. Here, light, light. This is underneath. Right there. Yep. The spring goes in there. I think I just dropped some spring. Ah, there you go. Thank you. You see how easy it is? I just dropped that spring. Thank God my uh my trusty uh, manager over here spotted it. But this spring goes inside there. And this allows you a little bit of play up and down like I showed you earlier. Okay, so that's that. Now we're gonna put the spring back with its family over there. We're gonna take the rear blade, we're gonna stick it back on here with our screw that we took out earlier, just to keep a, a full set, a, uh, a factory sights in case you wanna ever reverse them. Um, we have tons of them here. If you ever need a factory rear MK2 sight, I have about uh, 20 sets. So uh, reach out to me and I'll be happy to help you out. And it's a pain in the butt to get it back in, but you want to do it correctly. You don't want to... Anyway, for the sake of time, we're not going to try to do that, but it's a pain in the ass. You just got to take your time and you'll get it. So now what do we do now? We need to get this, remember here, let's go back to our Trigicon mounting plates. We have our plate that goes like the site, pushes in. This plate we're not going to use until we put the plastic back on. Put the plastic cover back on, then we're going to put our plate on top, our two-piece plate. And then we're going to put our red dot on top. So let's focus on this guy for a second. What I'm going to do is I'm going to oil these rails. I'm going to oil these rails. We want to make it as least friction as possible. And we're putting it back on because this is, a, this is a tight fit. So there is a certain way that this goes. If you want to take a look at that and try to put that right there, and then if you try to, I should take it off thing, but you can try to put this back on, and you can see if there's a bigger gap in the front, and it goes the other way. Every single time, I tend to uh, always put it the wrong way. But all you need to do is, if you do put it the wrong way, it will still fit. You just need, might need to shave a little plastic off the rear. And we'll see how it goes and this time you guys might be uh, able to see that so let's go ahead and let's back this guy out we are going to oh, i guess it goes this way we're going to put this back in there just like the site does push it in a little bit and now the trick is to get this to fit in there without damaging it so what we're going to do is now Unfortunately, I stripped this side um, bolt, so I have to switch it every time. But when it comes from uh, uh, Brownells is where we got this from. Both sides and you have two screws, so you can easily go back and forth. Unfortunately, after about five years of using it, we stripped this side. So I'm gonna have to do the same thing over here. I'm gonna take this off. Take this off. time for a new uh, hydraulic sight pusher what do you think if you have a hydraulic press you could probably also use a hydraulic press as well It'd probably be a lot easier than doing this so I'm adding more room here so I can add this and actually push it and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push it from the rear left of the gun towards the hole I'm gonna do this because I'm gonna stop right before that hole I'm gonna insert the spring and then push it underneath this mount to keep it steady so it doesn't pop out. If you do it the other way, um, you're gonna to have to push it past this and then push it back. And because of our situation with our sight pusher, it only works one way, uh, I don't want to do that. Okay, so, where's my... If anyone is an engineer, 
and they would like to design a universal sight pusher that is not made like this one, I will, uh, I'll pay top dollar for it. <laughs> and I'm sure everybody else will. Maybe a quick, quick connector, an easy uh, changing of the, okay. So we're gonna tighten this guy down. Again, same kind of situation. We're gonna let it sit flat, tighten. Other side. Okay, you wanna use your washers again to make sure that it doesn't get caught up on there. Two of them, place that in there. We're gonna place our pusher back on. Voila, and now we're gonna push this guy back to where he belongs. Slow is better. You want this to sit on that lip. Now, as I push, see that, guys? Can you see that? It's going in. It's gonna to tend to turn up because you're going righty-tighty. And as you can see it, this is what I want, okay, good. Look at that sight, guys. You see how it's starting to go up on one side? That's because the slide is not centered. It's not, it's not tight enough. So it's actually pushing it down, and it's not pushing it up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back down, and retighten the slide a little bit more so it doesn't have any movement. This also can be dropped down just a little bit because it's not sitting 100% on the shelf. Let's drop it down just a hair. And you want to make sure that anytime you're doing this, this, this is a flat plane. So sometimes this will be lower or higher depending on what your base is here. For example, this looks like it's being pushed down and to the right. We don't want that. We want it to be pushed straight. So we're gonna take this off. We're going to erase it a little bit or lower it, whatever it allows it to be straight. And you can use it up a little plane, and then we're gonna tighten it back. Okay. Now we're gonna go back to pushing. Put that guy back in there. And now it's a little bit too high. Again, one of the downfalls of using this is it's all manual. And you have to make adjustments because you don't want to destroy the gun or you don't want to set it up in a way that's going to cause more problems. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hang this off the edge, just a hair. We're going to tap this down just a little bit, lower this. So if I'm, a, if, I, if you want to see this from the back, I think it's a little bit easier. Let's lower this. Hang on. So you can see where exactly what we're trying to, the level we're trying to get at. Okay. Look at it from the back. You want, where's your sight? Okay, let's try to focus this guy. That sight and that pusher should be lined up. It's hard to get a, you want it on the same plane. So I'm gonna lower this down a little bit so it pushes it straight back. Thank you. There we go. Perfect. Tighten it. Be careful if you're gonna do this by with the power tool because it will flip flip right up. And then this guy here, let's go down a little bit. Tighten it. Good. Okay. So now we adjusted our our height of the pusher. We're gonna put our pusher back in there. Hopefully it lines up properly now. We have our two washers on there to allow it to spin. And I'm gonna turn this around. We're gonna hold this guy with one finger. Okay, so you see how that's meeting up with it right there perfectly? You wanna make sure you don't damage the slide as well. So we're gonna to continue to push, push. Push, 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 push. Back, back it out if you see it not going straight. Let's push it. It should be straight up and down. Push this side. Push, 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 push. Until you get right about there, okay? Take a look at that. See where the hole is, where that spring needs to go? Can you see that? Now, let's get it in the light. We showed you before, here, that spring needs to go back in that hole. So, it's only covered partially by this. I don't know if you can see that, all right? 
Where are we at? Yep. So that hole, right there. Back up. Yep, so it's covered halfway. We're gonna take our spring with our tweezers, very carefully push it into that hole, and they need, they need light. Back up. You need some light here, so we're gonna do it this way. You're gonna insert, insert the spring into the hole, very carefully, because it will fly out. There we go, okay. Pull it out slowly. Now it's gonna be hanging out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the end of our tweezers, put our thumb over it so it doesn't fall, and we're gonna push it underneath this mount. Okay, you might need to adjust it a little bit. You want it to be as straight as possible. There you go. So now it's facing straight up and down. Now I'm gonna to continue to push this a little bit further. You want to use the slide and the back of the slide as a guide to tell you when to stop. You want to be equal on both sides. That's pretty close. And then you can fix the rest with it. So let's take that out. Let's look at it again just to make sure. So it looks like it needs to be pushed a little bit further down. Again, once you take it out and you look at it, you can measure it against the sides, how much is showing, and it looks like it needs to go in a little bit. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna push it again. Just a little bit. Good. Oh, oh that was. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so now that this is done, we're gonna inspect our mount. Looks pretty good to me. I see that it might be tilted this way a little bit, so I'm gonna take a hammer, just gonna give it a couple of knocks to make it straight. There you go. See, see if you can see that. I don't know if the contrast is enough there. I don't know, something different color. Here. Oh, it's good. We just need some more light. Go ahead. Yeah, it's okay. Give me this. I just want you guys to see something real fast. See that? That's perfect. It's equal on each side. If you look from the back, it's perfectly centered. And now I'm going to show you the ultimate test. Number one, don't forget to put your loaded chamber indicator back inside here and your spring. Okay, now you're gonna take your slide. There's a little lip on the front of this guy here. This has to actually go underneath the lip and back. And then we're gonna to try to push this guy back forward. And what do you know? Perfect. Again, it takes a little bit of time, guys, to get, uh, you know, this usually takes me about 45 minutes if I'm not rushing. But that's what it should look like. Can you see it in the camera? No? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, there you go. See how perfect that is? You don't have to cut anything. You don't have to shave anything. We picked the right uh, orientation. So the next thing we're going to do here, we're going to make sure our loaded chamber indicator is in with our spring. We're going to take our pin to hold our slide or our slide cover in the exact same way. So we pushed it out this way. It's going to go back in this way. Put that in there. Take a rubber side. Hit it up. And our punch. Gently tap the rest of it in. There you go. So you want it to, again, as factory as possible. It's exactly the way it comes from the factory. Everything looks good on it. We're gonna move everything to the side now. And the next step is to mount the plate. And where is my plate at? Where did the plate go? This is why you should have a very organized area because no idea where to play this, huh? Um, um, um. Maybe I put it back in there. There it is. Hey, 
So Ashley's a jokester today, but... It was on the tree, G. <laughs> anyway, so they have your plate here. This is going to go onto this slot. Like that. You're going to have for your Trigicon, two dots in the front. That's what's going to hold this on. Burris Fast Fire and Vortex Venom has four dots. And once you put this plate on, you'll be able to see if you need to make any adjustments. And I'll show you that just in a second. Get some Loctite. Two dashes. We're going to put one drop. Two drops. Just a little bit. You don't want the vibrations to make those come loose. And we're going to put our two screws that come with it inside. Put them down there. Take a little Allen wrench and gently tighten them. Don't over tighten yet. Okay, just gently tighten it. Pull that guy out. And now you're gonna inspect again. So as upon inspection, I see that it's still tilted a little, little bit. I got that. I still tilt it a little bit to the left. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my hammer and I'm just gonna give it a little whack until when you're looking at it from the side, it no longer goes on an upward incline. So now I'm gonna re-examine and you can put it, this should be parallel with this. And when you're looking from behind, take a look at that. It should be perfectly centered and you can use that line as a guide and you'll be able to see that more when the Trigicon gets put on. So we're almost done. Stick with me. Trigicon RM06 adjustable LED red dot 3.25 MOA it comes with a battery and mounting screws. The Our optics, our, our, our plates do come with screws. I like to use the Trigicon screws. They're a little bit longer and they have uh, Loctite already on them. And then the battery, what I like to do as well, we discovered when we started doing this that a lot of people would, because of the recoil, they the, the red dot was intermittent. They sent it back to us. What we've discovered is that this contact point underneath the Trigicon, we bend it out just a little bit to give it more contact, more pressure. That's enough. And we take bulb grease or dielectric grease and we put a little dot underneath so it doesn't move around. This grease conducts electricity, allows electricity to flow through it, and it keeps the, the uh, battery set in place. You look at underneath, it says negative facing down, so our positive will be facing up. We're gonna push it against this, push it down there, and now that almost acts like a glue. So it's not going anywhere. We're gonna come back over to our slide. First, we'll test the optic to make sure that it's on. Yes, it is. Let's increase the intensity a little bit. Maybe we can show you guys how it looks. Again, this optic is, uh, the RMO6 is, is the, in my opinion, the best solution for not only the PS90, the 5.7, anything that requires an, uh, an optic, an, RM, an RMR, Trigicon makes the best optics, and the RMO6 is an adjustable LED red dot. It has eight different brightness settings from super bright, as you can see, I'll put it on, and then we'll do it, then it'll be easier, to two night vision settings. If you have night vision and you don't want to be blind, as well as five other adjustable settings, different dimnesses. And if you press both of these buttons at the same time, it turns on to on automatic mode. Automatic mode automatically adjusts the brightness of the dot depending on the lighting conditions. So if I'm in my office now and it's kind of dim in here, the bright would the light or the red dot would dim so it doesn't give me night blindness and doesn't affect my view of whatever I'm trying to tar uh, hit. If I go outside and it's very sunny, let's say it's noon, it will know that the intensity of the red dot needs to increase. So it would do that automatically. And I believe that's a very, very strong part of this, why I like this optic so much, or this RMR, is because it doesn't allow you or it doesn't force you to put your hand close to the muzzle in order to change the intensity. Now it might feel like these are too long. I've had a couple people ask me, well, I don't want to strip it, I don't want to damage it. They're not too long, it's just because of the Loctite, it feels tight. So you're actually gonna to continue to do each one, rotating back and forth, so you get a nice even, until that is done. So you tighten just a little bit, pull it off, and you're gonna to go to the last one. You don't wanna over-tighten them, guys. Remember, you put Loctite. Tighten it, 
and that's it. So we're going to inspect one more time from the front, from the back, from the side. Everything looks good. And if you can try to get this is the you can actually do it here. This is the RM06. So let's see if we can get that. Here we go. That's super bright. And obviously, as you look at it from a distance. Now let me turn down the intensity one so you can understand what the difference is between super bright and bright and Okay, so that's super bright. The first one down, immediately it goes lower. So if you are nighttime at all, you probably are not going to want to use the top two settings. Lower, lower, lower. See that? So now that holographic sun or brightness disappears and it's only a red dot. And I believe you can even go a little bit lower than that too if it's dark outside here. Uh, there we go. I'm trying to find it. It's too, too dim, but it's there somewhere. So again, just depending on your hit, there it is. Right. Yep. So again, this is a great optic. Let's do automatic mode. We press both of them at the same time. And it will automatically adjust. There we go. See that? It automatically adjusts the brightness. And that's a 3.25 MOA. Perfect for pistols. Perfect for the uh, PS90. If you're going to be doing above 100 meter shots let's say 200 meters with the ps90 for example you might want to go with the one moa red dot um that's it, it, it obscures less of your target and let's put this guy on an actual gun so you can take a look at it By the way, guys, Matt from FN57 Sale. If you go to over to FN57Sale.com, FN57Sale.com, we're giving away an FNX45. Next month, June, you can register for that at the bottom of the page. Also, when we launch our new app that's coming out called Just Guns, we're going to be giving away one of every FN firearm. SCAR 17, 16, PS90, uh, a bunch of stuff. It's going to be really nice, nice launch. And um, at that point, if you want to register, pre-register for the Just Guns app, it's the first national firearms marketplace that allows every dealer in the country to scan in all of their inventory, allow it to be for sale 24 hours a day, seven days a week on the marketplace, and you will get your own app on your phone, and you can scan in your inventory as well. With the push of a button, you can post it for sale privately if you are a verified buyer or seller. And the app costs nothing. There's no listing fees. There's no back-end fees. The dealers also, we give you a free POS system, digital 4473s, digital bound books. All you do is scan the UPC and the serial number. And we enter it into your acquisition and disposition book automatically and post it for sale to the marketplace for free. No listing fees, no back-end fees, no percentage of sale fees. Uh, the POS system is free for dealers as well. Go to justguns.com to pre-register. Hope you found this uh, video somewhat uh, educational and uh, the site pusher is really needed, unfortunately. And that's why we, we stress that in the uh, online on our site, you know, professional installation is required just because doing it with a, you know, a punch and a hammer, unfortunately, you're talking about a, an FN57. We're not talking about a, a Smith & Wesson shield here where you can just, you know, punch it out at the $300 gun, big deal. You're talking about one of the best guns in the world. So don't... Uh, don't buy a you know, $650 optic and $150 mount and then go beat it with a hammer. Is I guess the, the point of the, the, uh, what I'm trying to say is let a professional go ahead and do this for you. Make sure it's sighted in. And one last thing, to sight this in. When we're looking at this red dot, this is the tall blade on the MK2. This optic, because it sits higher than the blade, you can never co-witness this with this and there's no rear sight anyway. But the red dot is not going to match up with this dot. It's going to be above it. It doesn't mean it's not going to shoot straight. It just means that it's not low enough to reach this dot. So what I found to do is the first thing over here on the adjustment is you turn it all the way to the left. Bring, it, bring that red dot all the way down as far as possible. Start there. Shoot a couple rounds. See how you do with using the red dot. And then make your adjustments upwards. And that's your best bet. Again, you can reach me if you have any questions. Uh, Matt, M-A-T-T at fn57sale.com give me a ring 954-805-3440 and uh, any questions, concerns 
I'll be here to help guys. Hopefully this video will kind of explain a little bit better on how to install the Trijicon Pro Shops uh, custom RMR mount as well as the Burris and the Fast Fire. It's the same concept. We have these for the MK2 and the USG for Trijicon, for Burris, for Vortex, and for Leopold. So whatever you need, feel free to uh, reach out to us and we'll be happy to help guys. Have a great weekend and enjoy your effing product. Thanks.